Thanks so much for having me. Afternoon, everybody. As uh, said, I am the president and the CEO of Remforth Resources. So we're going to talk about Remforth, which trades publicly on the CSE with the symbol RFR. And it um, OTCQB New York, RFHRF, as well as uh, lastly in Frankfurt, uh, 9RR. So Remforth is in the province of Quebec, and what Remforth offers to shareholders is basically a very cost-efficient um, leveraged exposure to full package of battery metals. Specifically, we're looking here at a portion of our 29 kilometers in length strike currently. It will grow. On Surumo, this is Victoria, and this mineralization or the mineralization held in these rocks consists of nickel cobalt platinum group elements in an ultramafic, as well as a shear zone, which is giving us VMS stringers with uh, copper, well, zinc, copper, silver, and gold. And in fact, we've now identified a third type of mineralization, which gives us lower grade, but quite possibly much larger volume of um, zinc and copper. So let's get to it. As I said, I am the president and the CEO, so you're duly cautioned. Always do your own due diligence. I'm not a financial advisor, and I cannot give you financial advice. If you have questions, you can always reach out to me via my email, Nicole at remforthresources.com um, or through social media. So where are we? I told you we're in the province of Quebec. Quebec is the largest landmass, province by landmass in this country. We're in the southern portion, the Abitibi district. Um, what that gives us is extremely secure jurisdiction. I don't know how closely you follow world events with regard to battery metals or metals in general, but we're seeing several jurisdictions seize control, either by seizing assets, changing the tax regime, requiring larger portions of partnership with the state. Um, Quebec, one of the top 10 mining jurisdictions in the world annually, clear rule of law. And interestingly, a government that's very focused on critical and strategic minerals, and in fact, the full cycle of, uh, of mineral production, both upstream, which is where we are, and downstream, which refers to the production of battery chemicals and, and batteries themselves. So you can look at what the province of Quebec is doing to that regard as well on their own websites. So we are an area play. I consolidated a whole bunch of historic showings which have lain dormant since the 1980s. We are going to speak to two assets. Um, there are other properties in the company, but they're much less advanced and we don't have time today. Now, first and foremost is our Surimo property. It's indicated by the numeral one here. It's wholly owned, it's unencumbered. There's um, 330 square kilometers within this property. As you can see, there are numerous base metal slash battery metal showings indicated in blue, gold in yellow, and in orange is a copper discovery we made. Surimo is incredibly well located. And in fact, our logistics and location is our main differentiator from other um, battery metal stories out there. Then very close by, we have number two, our Parbeck gold deposit. It does have a compliant but dated 43101 resource, which totals uh, 104,000 ounces at 1.78 grams per ton inferred, which is a very good inferred number, accompanied by 177,000 indicated ounces at 1.77 grams per ton. However, subsequent to the calculation of that resource, we drilled another 15,000 meters and we validated at 13,000 historic. So I put to you that that resource is in fact out of date. However, since our focus since then has been Surimo, we have not gone back to update our resource, but it's on the list. However, it's down on the list. Why? Because Surimo, as indicated in orange here, our focus is the two structures in orange. The southern one, the one at the bottom is Victoria. It's 20 kilometers long, and it gives us the mineralization which you saw on the cover in a package that goes the entire 20 kilometers. And then just about three kilometers to the north of Victoria is the Lalonde trend. We've ground truthed 
meaning we've either drilled or surface sampled about nine kilometers of Le Londe, leaving a lot of Le Londe unverified yet. But we've verified mineralization for 29 kilometers. And that package is a couple hundred meters wide in terms of the north-south width because the east-west is the length. Now, we're incredibly well located, and that is our big our big advantage, in fact. Logistics <clears throat> gives us efficiency. Efficiency allows us to be as green as possible in our production scenario in the future, assuming we build a mine. But it also allows us to be as cost effective as possible. The highway is indicated on this map. That's the 117 highway. It's the northern route of the Trans-Canada Highway. That's a major highway. Towns of Cadillac, the town of Malartic, and further to the east, the, the town of Val d'Or. These are all established mining towns. Mining has been happening in this area for hundreds of years. In fact, Rouen is just off to the west. It didn't fit on this map. And it's another established mining town. So everything we need for exploration and future mine construction and production is available locally. And mining is accepted. There's not a knot in my backyard um, like local population or governmental objection, everyone's on side with mining. Um, the Cadillac break, which actually I'm going to go back. I think you can see my cursor. That's this red line. The Cadillac break in this area has been the reason for mining for hundreds of years. Starts in Kirkland Lake, Ontario, goes to Val d'Or, and it's a crustal scale fault with lots of gold. So every couple kilometers, there are gold mines. There are gold mines not shown on this map, but of note, we have the Westwood mine owned by IM Gold, the Laurel mine, Crown Jewel of Agnico Eagle, the Penna shaft is the deepest single stage gold shaft in North America. And then if we continue over here, we show you the Canadian Malartic mine, which is our neighbor. We're tied on directly at both Parbeck and Surimo four kilometer long open pit, 400 meters deep. This is another advantage for Surimo. The mineralization at Victoria, which runs right there and Lalon, which is right there, starts its surface. In fact, our deepest pierce point, our deepest drill hole is only 160 meters. So the fact that we have a giant open pit next door at Canadian Malartic will only make it easier for us to build an open pit for our surface mineralization in the future. <laughs> A few other notable things, the town of Cadillac, there's a road from the town of Cadillac directly through Surimo down to the Rapid 7 hydroelectric generating station. There's similarly one that's over here for Rapid 2. Rapid, this road, and in fact, the pylons for the power lines going to the generating station, that's how the mineralization was discovered in the 1940s when they built this dam, and then they blasted rock to put the power lines they found the mineralization at Le Londe and at Victoria. Saw a little bit of work in the 60s, a little bit of work looking for gold in the 80s, and nothing since. So we went in and we put it all together. So power lines, that gives us cheap electricity, cheapest in Canada, truly green. It's being generated at the Rapid 7 station. Other interesting things to note, we have no people living on this property. We have no significant lakes on this property. We have one First Nation to the north, which we're on good terms with. Half of our property is their treaty ground, which is actually good in that it identifies one First Nation we have to deal with. So that's the logistics story. Now, there's there's a copper discovery at Surimo. There's the battery metals. There's also lithium at Surimo. And there's lots of pegmatites on the south side of the property we haven't looked at. We'll be doing that in a couple of weeks. So this is all well and good, but it's important to know the time is now. In mining, you can have a resource. You can even have access to funding. But if you don't have a market, if you don't have the customers, you can't run a business. And mining is a business like any other. The challenge is to produce the material at a cost below what you can sell the material for. With the commodities prices rising and our future costs as low as our current and future costs, as low as they could possibly be, we have a very good chance of running a solid business. The world needs these metals. In order to do the energy pivot, all of the metals we have, the nickel, the cobalt, the platinum group elements, the copper, the zinc, they all have a role. The silver and the gold is a different matter, but all of those have a role, as do the lithium, and they're all needed. 
So the time is now. I inserted these just so you can see how well the mineralized anomaly that is Victoria and Lalonde, how visible these are. And they were ignored for so long. We're in an area south of this structure, which has made many, many fortunes. We're in an area called the Pontiac Sediments, which was always unexplored, underexplored, presumed to not be worth exploring. In fact, Barrick is now looking at it on a regional scale. They'll be sampling on our property in order to get whole rock samples to try and learn about the Pontiac Sediments. This is virgin ground for all intents and purposes besides some of the biggest and most prolific mines in this country. So it's a pretty cool place to be. There you can see Victoria and Lalonde again. And we flew our own geophysics just a little bit because I didn't want to spend a lot of money. You can see the magnetic feature, but you also see these little uh, peach colored and white circles, the pink and the red over here. These are EM anomalies, they're electromagnetic anomalies occurring with the bigger magnetic anomaly. And the EM sees sulfides down to about 100 meters. But what it does do is if our geologists go out in the field to one of the locations where there is, say, a peach-colored square, and they find the, the surface rock, bedrock, they will sample and they will get sulfides on surface. So this map became our roadmap to mineralization as far as the nickel polymetallic is concerned the prospective lithium area is not covered in this map. So we stripped. That's a different view of what you saw on the front. Uh, when we did this stripping, we thought we knew everything, and Mother Nature taught us a lesson. We thought all the mineralization, which runs east-west, was contained in this area. We determined that our cuts, our cross cuts to the north were about 30 meters short of another mineralized horizon. Then this past December, where we went further north and drilled south, we found there's in fact a third mineralized horizon. So Victoria, even when we start to think we know what we're doing, Mother Nature gives us a little surprise in a positive way. When we're drilling, we're seeing a lot, lot of large scale, low grade material, which is fine. Nickel mines, polymetallic mines can work on a relatively low grade basis. We mine low grade copper all over this planet right now. Um, but that's not to say we know everything because we do see higher grade occurrences within the lower grade material. But again, as I think you can see my cursor, the blue is indicative of the nickel mineralization. And this is the VMS stringer phase, which gives us the copper and the zinc. Occasionally, these two do mix. We feel that there's melting when one intruded on the other and it causes mixing as well. So we're still learning and things are still growing we're at the beginning of a very exciting story. Similarly, we stripped at Lalonde. We caught two horizons at Lalonde. We think that's all there is, but we could be wrong. This shows you where we have drilled. We've drilled less than 10,000 meters in three locations. In terms of strike at Victoria, we drilled off 2.2 kilometers east-west. That was followed by about just under a kilometer east-west at Lalonde. And then in December, we ended up drilling off about 750 meters east-west at the western end of Victoria. All of these return mineralization. Um, we saw more of the graphitic mudstone giving us zinc and copper over here than we saw over here. And we learned something. Over here, the graphitic mudstone was just a marker horizon, very narrow. We didn't see a lot of it. We didn't pay a lot of attention. Over here, we see layers and layers of it, in some instances quite thick, and it's mineralized. And it's possibly of a low grade. However, it's black in, in a country rock that's much lighter colored. So it could be uh, sorted to upgrade it before processing in the future. So it's exciting. We're still working. We're still learning. Um, our location, it's like real estate. We're in the right place. We're in Quebec's near north access to everything we need, highways to everywhere or to water, um, working ports, free trade agreements with the United States. We qualify under the U.S. Inflation Act, Inflation Reduction Act, and a few others. And they have a not in my backyard problem. So I see our future as green, very green, very sustainable. The electricity is green and cheap. 
The ultramafics, once they're exposed to oxygen, actually pull carbon out of the environment. So that's how you hear about nickel stories becoming net zero nickel stories. Um, our location and logistics allow us to be efficient, cost effective, and reduce waste, be green. What inspires me is actually the Terrafame company has the Talvivara mine in Finland, and they are producing nickel and nickel sulfate battery chemistry. Um, cobalt, they, they have the same sort of materials we have, the same rocks. Their grades are... Our grades look a little bit better than theirs, to be very honest with you, at the stage we're at right now. And our story will continue to change as we work. They have a lot of material, but they're running two open pits. And then they're heap leaching, which is a very good way to produce. Um, and then they're sequestering the carbon afterwards when the heat, is, the heat, le the heat material is spread out. So that's my inspiration. If they can do it, we can do it. Just have to do the work. Now, lithium. Very briefly, we know we have pegmatites all over the property. We know we have lithium in the sediments. Finding lithium in and of itself is not that difficult. Uh, we are actually, I'm awaiting to, at the end of this week, get our pegmatite exploration plan from an expert, PhD in pegmatite exploration. Um, the only lithium showing in spongimine in the camp is just off of our western border, and it's within the Decelles batholith. We have the biggest position within the batholith. We know we have pegmatites in the batholith. We know we have pegmatites in the sediments. This is a very prospective setting, and I've already heard at the halfway point of our plan being worked up. We have targets. In fact, we have stripping targets for pegmatites now. So we will be getting that document, hopefully at the end of the week, or early next week. And we'll be putting guys in the field prospecting the lithium as well as the base metals, but focused on the pegmatites um, Sorry, probably the end of the month. So um, now let's have our Q&A session. And the first question is by Grace. When will you be release releasing your next drilling result? And do you expect to be raising money in the near future for your unique one-two punch combination with both gold and battery metals? We uh, expect we will have the balance. We almost have all our drill results. Geologists will have to then put them in order. So when will we be releasing? End of the month, towards the end of the month. Fundraising. I'm always open to discussion. We have a hard dollar fundraising that somebody's looking at right now, which is a five cent unit. So it's a common share, and it's actually a three-year purchase warrant, a full warrant, which allows you to purchase another share at five cents. So if you believe in the future, it's a very compelling product. It's out there right now. If you want more information, you can reach out to me directly on that. Great. Right. And the second question is by Rehan. Uh, China heavily relies on imports of critical minerals. Will Renforth look for any Asia partners? Well, I'm speaking to a gentleman, funnily enough, I met him in London and he's from, he's, he's in Markham. He's probably about half an hour from my office, but um, he represents Chinese SOEs and, or people associated with them. They're looking at the gold right now, actually for something different, but I won't say no to Chinese. However, it's not, it's not a conversation yet. We're still early stage. So um, I'll look for money. I'm not, Money's money. I'm not worried about where it comes from so much. Great. So that's all the questions for today. Thank you, Nicole, for the insightful presentation on the importance of gold in the production of electric vehicles and its potential impact on investment opportunities. So for those who are interested in gold and battery metals, Renforth Resources is a company that you should watch closely as we transition towards a greener economy. Thank you, Nicole, once again for being here with me today. Thanks so much for having me, everyone. Thank you.